Hi there. We are on to our second story book today. We are reading the beautiful story, The Lost World of Possum Creek. This was one of my favourites as a kid, so I really hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's read. The Lost World of Possum Creek. Poem by Dan Vallelli. Illustrations by Yvonne Perrin. I love the illustrations and pictures in this book. It's beautiful. Six friends from Possum Creek had been camping for a week in a mountain range some distance to the west. It was Ed Galar's idea and he'd planned it for a year as a sort of back to nature fitness test. Then upon the final day, Wally Wombat, whilst at play, chanced upon a tunnel in the mountainside. At a meeting all agreed to be daring and proceed. So they ventured in, though all were petrified. The friends in single file journeyed onwards for a while singing happy songs to keep their spirits bright. They emerged fatigued and sore from within the mountain's core, quite bedazzled by the sudden change of light. They were standing on the edge of a narrow crumbly ledge that wound downwards to an ancient valley floor. Jagged cliffs rose left and right to an awe-inspiring height, and a mist-enshrouded jungle lay before. At the base, a tranquil pool, filled with water, clear and cool, proved so tempting that the creatures dived right in. They were washing off the crust of accumulated dust when frightened by a most unearthly din. Lumbering into view it came, its triceratops by name, squawked Professor Cockatoo in strangled tones. For a million years at least, this great prehistoric beast has been thought extinct, no more than rotting bones. Some disaster long ago be it quake or lava flow, has cut off this place and locked it in the past. Every species that you see, reptile, mammal, bug or tree, has remained unchanged throughout the ages vast. The explorers ploughed their way through a swamp for half a day, passing dinosaurs of every shape and hue four with long enormous necks, a Tyrannosaurus Rex, which chased platypus and big red kangaroo. Uh-oh. Up ahead, an arch of bone, led to 50 steps of stone, which the nervous friends ascended one by one. At the top, upon a stand, stood a statue rich and grand, in the image of a golden rising sun. As the creatures stood spellbound, Peter Possum heard a sound and alert to danger gave a warning call. Swooping upward from beneath, shaking claws and gnashing teeth, pterodactyls came to capture one and all. They could not escape their fate. All was lost, it seemed. But wait, for the earth beneath their feet began to shake. The pursuers left their prey, turned and quickly flew away. As Big Red began to stutter, a earthquake. Springing forward with a yell, our young heroes tripped and fell and went skidding down the steps upon their rears and then jumping to their feet, beat a very fast retreat. 
as the ancient structure crumbled round their ears. A volcano belched out flame as they raced back whence they came and gigantic fissures opened in the ground. Smoke and ashes filled the air. There was chaos everywhere and huge dinosaurs stampeded all around. Exhausted, bruised and burned, the bewildered friends returned to the tunnel mouth and as they raced inside, with a rumble and roar, it was sealed forevermore by the power of a thundering landslide. But I think that Edgar Lahr went a little bit too far, for he smuggled out a pet that's growing fast. It's a purple spiky thing, and he's taught it how to sing. It should be a hit when they get home at last. Uh-oh, look at that. Look who Ed Glass smuggled out. I wonder what's going to happen there. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that story. That is an absolute favourite. So tomorrow, I thought I might leave it as a bit of a mystery what we're going to read next. So you'll have to tune in if you want to find out what our new story is going to be. Okay, bye for now.